It is bonus time. Here is a general and powerful theorem about saddle points and Nash equilibria. It is called the Minimax theorem, and it's very cool. Given any payoff matrix P, there exists a Nash equilibrium that is probability vectors A and B, so that if you look at the expected payout a transpose PB. It's, it's optimal. It's a maximum for one player and a minimum for the other. That is, the maximum over all vectors X of X transpose P times B is equal to the minimum over all vectors Y of A transpose PY. That is, the first player maximizes the gain, the second player minimizes the loss. And again, these uh, maxima, these minima, these are over probability vectors. This is a hard theorem. It requires some deeper tools and calculus, maybe a little bit of algebraic topology going on there. Oh, well, uh, let's go back, look at some examples of some 3 by 3 Nash equilibria that you could compute with a little bit of work. So remember, the payoff matrix for rock, paper, scissors, and the payoff matrix for this Mendelssohn game, and then something fun, just something at random that I wrote down. Okay, if you analyze these, what you'll find is that for rock, scissors, paper, boom, it's the obvious thing. A and B are the same, one third, one third, one third, and nobody has an advantage. Perfectly symmetric. For the Mendelssohn game, it's, uh, it's similar. A and B have the same optimal probability vectors, although in the Mendelssohn case, you want to play strategy two twice as often as you play strategies one or strategy three. Now, both of these games are symmetric. They're fair. No player has uh, an advantage. The net uh, expected outcome is, is zero at the Nash equilibrium. Over the long run, it's a tie. However, in this random thing that I wrote down, the optimal probability for A is to play strategy 1, 9 23rds of the time, and the other strategy 7 23rds of the time. And for player B, it's totally different. Oh my gosh, what is that? 17 46? What? Uh, where'd that come from? I don't know. That's not obvious, but that is what the Nash equilibrium is. That is the optimal strategy. And in this case, one player has a definite advantage over another and will win over the long run. Which is it? Not so obvious. Now, in general, this stuff works most of the time. You have to be a little bit careful. Some games have saddle points with coordinates that violate the constraints. They, they, they might give you negative probabilities. That's not cool. If you're working with matrices that are not square matrices, you're going to need a different approach for finding the Nash equilibrium. The, the straightforward optimization saddle point result that I've shown you um, doesn't hold in general. But game theory is so cool. There is so much to see and learn in other contexts. You might wonder, what happens if the payoffs change as you play? You, you look at dynamic games. What happens if you have more than two players? What happens if you try to improve teams? Can that improve the net outcomes? What does that have to tell us about genetics and evolution? Ooh, so many good questions. What happens if the set of strategies is not discrete, but continuous? I wonder if integrals might show up here somewhere. So many interesting questions.